Hi guys, welcome to our third video on power mapping. So, so far we covered power and influence, we've talked about the roles, and what I have behind here is your power map graph. Now this is really important because it helps you put logic into who the stakeholders are, the roles, and how you're gonna kind of build a successful strategy. So, I'm gonna get Tash to tell us a little bit about what the quadrants mean. Awesome, so basically what we're gonna do is when we look at this map together as part of our marketing and sales teams, we're going to understand who are the most influential and powerful people within the organization that we're looking to partner with, who would strongly support this partnership and might be ready for change, and then on the opposite side of the scale, who might strongly oppose the change in partnership? This might be a person who's got a long-term relationship with another organization or um, service that they've been using for a really long time and then who in the organization has the least influence and power so we know that's not really where we need to focus these are going to be the people that we're going to focus on understanding who are the key decision makers and how can we create the best kind of content for them so that's how we're going to start with our power mapping tool today that's awesome and some of the things that you need to want to keep in mind before you start make sure you truly have one company first don't try to take shortcuts or approach loads of companies just you want to be you and your team hyper focused on what's the account you want to get then try to have a list of those key influencers uh, based on all the roles that we talked about and the third one is you need a space where you can collaborate. So if you have the chance, we highly recommend face-to-face. -face. We love being face-to-face. -face. The jamming sessions are so awesome. But if you can't, then what you can do is you can use like a digital board like Mido, which we also use for our international accounts. And we just, we just get together and focus on that one account and those influencers. And once you map it all out, it's definitely gonna help you with your strategy. 100% guaranteed, agree? Agree. Let's get into it. So what we're gonna do is, as mentioned before, the first thing we're gonna do is focus on a company. So the company we're gonna do will be Amazonia. <laughs> you knew it. So it's the uh, biggest in the world tech company. They do a lot of businesses all around the world, and we think it would be a great fit for us. But such a big organization, how do we tackle that? what we should do. Yeah, awesome. So with an organization like Amazonia where they have many, many business lines, it's really important to be able to focus in and hone in on one particular business line and look at who are the key decision makers, the buyers, the initiators, the gatekeepers within that one specific team. So we're gonna focus in on manufacturing as our starting point. Awesome, and I think a good idea as well is for the context of this workshop, uh, we we're gonna use Blue Melon Design Services as a full service creative agency specializing in content on the B2B space at a global scale. So we're gonna try to get into the door, try to find the right people and the right words to approach them and see if we can work together, and hopefully we can. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, guys, so we've got our company, we're focusing on manufacturing, we've got our map, we know the roles, and the marketing and sales team has given us their intel. Hypothetically, they should be here jamming with us, uh, but for the purpose of this kind of little workshop, we, we're gonna start with some names that they've given us, their position, and a little bit of their sentiment. So the sentiment is really important because it's, a, it's about how they feel or how we think they feel about us and our service. Now, if you don't have a relationship, it's okay, it's neutral, unknown, but you may have a connection there somewhere, so you wanna to try to identify that. So to start with, I've got Brian McDougall, and he is the head global campaign. So as you can imagine, a person like this, big responsibility, quite busy, time poor. However, big influencer probably has a lot of decision-making power and maybe a few budgets. So this is someone that is very important, but he doesn't really know us. So I'm just gonna put this little sentiment to be the neutral one. I'm just gonna stick him around on the, on the side. We're not gonna yet put them on the map because we need to kind of have a bit of a, of a see who is in the zoo and how they feel about us. So I'm just gonna do this first and Tasha's gonna tell us about the second person. Awesome, so we have Sandy Baines and she is the EA to the head of Global Campaign. So 
Being the EA, she is the gatekeeper. She's someone who basically um, has access to all the emails, phones for Brian. So in order to get to Brian, we need to learn a bit about Sandy, understand what her needs are from a content perspective or how she can help us work and talk to Brian. And we don't know much about Sandy yet. So we're just putting a little unknown emoji next to her. And now what we're gonna do really quickly is stick the other ones and get back into it. All right, so back into it. Uh, you can see here that in our world, in order to what we've done is we identify 11 potential people that we need to keep on our radar. And of those 11, they have very different sentiment values. We've got some that we don't know, they're neutral. Some of them that they, um, let's say they're happy or positive towards us, uh, and some of the ones that love us. And the reason for the thumbs up and the people that love us is because we do do work with a company similar to Amazonia, uh, and they, they, they like the work we've done, and we've seen an incremental kind of relationship and engagement through them. Uh, and then what we do is we look at, okay, how these, some of these guys can help us further explore partnerships with the wider organization. So right now, in this instance, we will have a bit of a conversation with the teams and start to see where do they fit within our map. Yep, awesome. One of them that we definitely need to work on, though, is this Natalie Adani here, who is, we've listed as an enemy or someone who hasn't maybe had a good experience for whatever reason in the past. So we've got to work out as a team how we're going to strategically help her move over to a more with positive. Hope. Hmm? She doesn't like his Oh, yes, it was me. It was, yeah, it was totally me. So now that we've done all sorts of things, we've got our names, we've put them all in our beautiful map. But something to, that I want to remind you what we did in video two was talking about all the roles that are part of your power map. So as you can see, each role has a different color. So what we went and did was after getting the name and the sentiment, we started to identify what role that they play when it comes down to influence and power. So sometimes, which is really interesting, you may find somebody that may fit two roles. You can be a gatekeeper and an influencer. You may be a decision maker and a buyer. So there's no one role that you can, there's no one position that you have to be just one role. And what this allows you to look at is like how complex uh, is the the stakeholder map in a way. Uh, it also allows you to look at, at a top level, where should we focus? Who do we want to spend a little bit more time? Who needs more loving? But I'm going to pass it on to Tash. She can tell us what happened on the background and what to do next. Awesome. So in order to get this level and depth of information, we've used certain tools as a company and as teams to bring this together. So we've used LinkedIn Sales Navigator, we use HubSpot to record a lot of this information, and in order to digitize this, we use Miro as well. So what we're gonna do is basically get a bit of an understanding of who fits where and where we're going to be then focusing our content as a sales and marketing team as we look through the sales funnel and the types of content that we're going to be creating for each person. So for example, we have Natalie Adani down here who doesn't feel so good about us. And so our goal here with content is how are we gonna move her sentiment from this strongly opposed to this change of working with us into strongly supportive because she is quite a key decision maker in the process and her influence can increase as we create content for her. And then someone like Brian McDougall, he is our top key decision maker, he has a lot of influence as well, and so we've got to figure out how do we create this content to support both his pain points and his needs in order to be the agency that they want to work with. Oh, that's great. And, and I also think that before doing these, it is important to do a bit of that homework of finding the person, their positions, because it's all about where do you focus your efforts and to making that campaign and that content as personal as possible. When we look at the map more in depth, then you start to look at the stuff that Brian may be interesting. It's completely different than what maybe Natalie needs or Stephanie wants. So because we specialize in human and very personalized content, this tool allows us to 
to, we're going to set up a campaign, but this gives us a roadmap and it'll spell out all the layers that we need to focus on when producing the content and when setting up these campaigns and how we track them as well so we can measure success over the long term. So believe me, it looks a little bit kind of wishy-washy, like on the stickies and stuff, but there's a lot of background info that goes into it. And once you get on your team on board, then it's so much easier to produce the content and measure it and rip on the results. So yeah. yeah, we basically want to imagine this as a similar to a B2C strategy, but in the B2B space where we're creating really personalized and tailored mm. content. And the next steps are really around coming together as a team, making sure we know who in marketing and who in sales are taking the next steps to evolve this strategy and bring it to life. How are we gonna record that information? Who, where does the account accountability sit for the individuals? What are our key deadlines in order to create that content? What channels are we pushing that content out into? And how are we sort of bringing together this account-based marketing strategy and ensuring that we can execute and measure the success of it? Nice, love it. It's very useful, it's not hard. If you need a hand with it, you can always reach out to us. We're more than happy to help you out. We run these type of workshops with organizations. Uh, or you can take it and use it and let us know if it works for you. Anything else, Ash? You can download our Power Map tool if oh, you want to. Yeah. And that's it, we've loved doing these videos for you. Thank Thanks. you so much, have a great day. Bye guys, thanks for watching.